The world wants to know, how is the lighting on the Cybertruck? It's super futuristic to look at, but what about the lighting? In this video, we're gonna go from front to back, discuss those little things down there that are apparently the headlights, and we're gonna show you guys the beam pattern. I wanna compare this to a couple aftermarket housings just to see how it stacks up to the competition. So, let's get rolling. So this right here is the headlights, and obviously, right off the bat, it's not like anything we usually see. It's so small, and as you can see right here, this is low beam and it's got three reflector style LEDs shooting. So the LEDs are shooting the reflector and giving you that light output. Is it any good? I'm gonna show you guys that in just a second. On a high beam right here, when you turn that on, you're gonna see four more reflectors light up with the LED chips. Now, in my opinion, that's not going to produce a big enough or a bright enough beam pattern. With all of the new technology out there, especially with like adaptive laser lights and the BMWs and whatnot, there's no way that that's going to compete. So right off the bat, this is what I want to do. I want to pull this over a little bit, shine it about maybe 10 meters away from the wall, show you guys the beam pattern, see if it even reflects like a normal vehicle would, and then we'll go on from there. So this is strictly low beam, and it is way brighter than I formally expected. As you can see, you kind of have hot spots here and about here. That hot spot is actually going to give you that down the range light output and that is gonna be very useful. But the width is also there. Now I definitely am way closer to the wall than I normally would in a test, but I wanted to try to figure out if the width matches other vehicles out there. So, so far this is impressive. Hit the high beams for me, let's see what happens. That is wild, and I wanna let you guys know, generally the high beams are going to be above the beam pattern of the low beams, and in this case they kinda of cross over. So if I'm using a digital lux meter and measuring the actual usable brightness here, I can guarantee you this is going to be brighter than most things that I test. Uh, just by looking at it, this thing is wicked bright. Why, why are we making such big headlight housings on other vehicles if those really slim uh, LED reflectors are brighter than most things that I see these days? Wild, absolutely wild. That's impressive. Let's compare this to something else. Let's compare just the low beams. Here's a Ford Bronco that my buddy had just sitting over here, and we had the aftermarket XB headlights, the Morimoto XB headlights installed. This, I do know, is a very good beam pattern, but it doesn't quite look fully consistent as the low beam of the Cybertruck does. However, I think that's due in part to the reading of 2,330 maximum lux. So the inconsistency you're seeing is just the brightest point, the two hot spots on the wall, is much brighter than the hot spot of the low beam on the Cybertruck. Both of them provide a very good width. And as you notice on the Bronco light output, you see those two little steps. That's so you can raise these headlights up just enough to not blind oncoming drivers, but also still have usable light output when you're driving down the road. This is what it looks like on high beam on the Ford Bronco. Now I assume that the Cybertruck will not be beat when it comes to Lux. I read 3,240 on the Cybertruck. Compared to this aftermarket housing, one of the best aftermarket housings for the Ford Bronco, I only measured 2420 or 2,420 maximum Lux. So the Cybertruck, just the factory lights on high beam are much brighter than this aftermarket housing. But you're generally driving around with your low beams on. So it's kind of a wash. I would rather have the light output from this aftermarket housing and low beam, but the Cybertruck has a pretty dang good high beam. But how does the Cybertruck compare to modern LED technology that hasn't been upgraded to an aftermarket housing? Now for fun, I wanted to compare the Cybertruck lighting to some modern headlights that I'm used to because it's my own personal 2023 M3 G80. Now the headlights on this BMW have the adaptive laser headlights, and they were one of the first ones that were unlocked from the factory. The reason I'm comparing is to show you that the brightness on the Cybertruck is pretty dang good. On low beam, remember the Cybertruck was 1400 lux. I read 1340 maximum lux from these BMW headlights. The BMWs, the Mercedes, all have pretty wicked headlights, and they do a lot of cool things. But as you see here, it's not quite as bright as the Cybertruck. And I sure know that the high beam's not gonna be as bright as a Cybertruck either. I measured 2,650 out of this laser high beam on a BMW, and again, that Cybertruck was 3,240 maximum lux. It was at the brightest point on the wall, that's what I'm reading. 
Now I totally admit that the BMW has features in the headlights that I really think the Cybertruck should have taken notes from. This BMW doesn't have fog lights either. However, when you turn the wheel to the left, look at all of that additional light. That's the adaptive part. When you turn your wheel all the way to the right, you see the right side of the wall illuminate there. Not to mention the hot spots also move with the steering wheel. So when you're driving at nighttime, wherever you're looking and that's the direction you're headed, that's where your headlights are pointed. Was the headlights on the Cybertruck a flop? No, I don't think so. I think they're extremely bright. Not quite as bright as some of the aftermarket housings that I've seen on other vehicles, but they're very bright, just with the lack of features I would have liked to see. So let's dive into the turn signal really quick. Right off the bat, you're noticing a standard amber blink so it doesn't have that awesome scrolling effect like a lot of the other manufacturers do. If you've noticed on those new vehicles with turn signals, it's still a standard blink and then it scrolls off. That's just a new thing that they had passed, so it has to be full brightness and then it can scroll. Here, they just chose the standard blink style, which is just fine. You'll also notice that it's a switchback, so it's amber and then it switches back to another DRL. I think this is the DRL. I don't know what they're calling this optical light pipe here, maybe another DRL. That's just what I see. This is what I'm assuming is the DRL down here, but it's also the turn signals. Let's go check on the inside of this vehicle, what that's all about. So let's first dive into the accent lighting that you see along here on the top of the dash and on the sides of the doors. That's actually nothing new. We've seen it on the BMWs and a lot of new cars. They allow you to customize it, but not fully to this extent. As you can see here, we've got this color wheel and I can choose all sorts of different colors to then change the interior to whatever color I want. On the BMWs, which I'm most familiar with, they are very limited. You can't just choose whatever. You can use two different colors, but you can't use whatever color you can think of on a color wheel. So that's cool. Apart from the standard dome lights and the two lights in the back and some of the footwell lights, it's all pretty much normal stuff in here. But what about the back? What about the tail lights and the reverse lights? Is the reverse light light output any good? Let's go check it out. So far, I think as far as aftermarket lighting goes, I think the Tundra that we had, the new Tundra in here, was actually a bit more cool than the lighting on this. I think it was more cool because they had those integrated light bars and the grills and everything was LED. A lot of this stuff is not replaceable. You can't just go and replace it with an aftermarket part. That's why everybody's getting them into buildings like this, 3D scanning everything to try to hurry up and scramble and get new stuff. But currently there's not a lot on the market to upgrade these. So anyways, this is what the taillight looks like on the Cybertruck. As you can see in parking light mode, this bar goes all the way. It's not very bright, but you're definitely going to see it from behind. When you hit the brakes, this happens, which in my opinion, it almost gets less bright. Yes, these have a dual intensity and they get a little bit brighter, but you lose that bar function. I wish that whole entire bar was that dual brightness bar instead of just now this little piece in the middle here. In my opinion, I've seen way worse. I've seen a lot less light come out from a new taillight, but I really did wish that this whole thing lit up for the brake lights. Go back to parking lights and this right here, in my opinion, looks cooler. What about the reverse lights? They're right down here. Now the reverse lights, in my opinion, are actually pretty bright, a lot brighter than some of the aftermarket housings that we have compared and put up against other aftermarket housings. But when you look at it, the biggest issue with the lighting is the noise. This is so annoying, and I know that if you own an electric vehicle, you're used to this noise, but in my personal opinion, it's the dumbest thing in the world. Hello, we're backing up. That's why they're making the noise. It's the law, right? I don't know, maybe it's not the law, but I sure know that all electric vehicles make some sort of noise when they're backing up. It's a safety feature. But the brightness of the reverse lights themselves are not that bad. I'm gonna back this up to the wall just to see how bright it really is. If you're interested to see how the Cybertruck stacks up to an aftermarket LED bulb, this is what it looks like with the Ultra Series reverse light replacing the incandescent bulb on a Bronco. As you can see, an aftermarket LED bulb is substantially brighter than the Cybertruck. And the issue with the Cybertruck is that it's OEM LED, which means you can't just throw an aftermarket LED bulb in it. Still, I think it's got a good light output, but not nearly as bright as if you put in an aftermarket LED bulb in. The only other lighting that's worth talking about is the bed lighting. Once you open the tailgate and open up that bed cover, you're gonna see what I'm talking about. There's two strips on each side. By far, this is the most usable bed lighting features that I've ever seen on any vehicle. Generally on the Fords or the GMC Sierras, you're gonna get that little light right here by the tailgate, and that's simply not enough. 
this is very usable. Now the bed itself is a little bit less usable because it's not quite as big as a normal size truck, but still the lights on each side are where it's at. You don't see the LEDs. This has the same kind of frosted look that you had on the front of that DRL. So in my opinion, this is really cool. And from here on out, I think every manufacturer should replicate this when it comes to the bed lighting. We need more bed lighting. If you don't have that and you're familiar with our channel, you've seen a ton of different products that we put on headache racks and inside of the bed so we can get more lighting. So final thoughts on the Cybertruck. Personally, I think they did a really good job with the low beam and the high beams brightness. I think they lacked on a few of the key features that you should have or should expect from a futuristic truck like this. Now the tail lights and the reverse lights, even the reverse lights were pretty good, but the tail lights and everything on the inside was pretty much so-so. Nothing really cool to write home about. I don't think it was quite as advanced as say even the brand new Tundra when you have all of that additional lighting. So at the end of the day, pretty cool, fun. I hope you guys learned something and go to headlightrevolution.com, type in your year, make and model to see everything that we have tested as far as lighting goes for your vehicle.